And greetings. Happy Friday. Thank you for tuning in here today, live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. Steve Dace here with Todd Erzin, Aaron McIntyre, our good friend Shannon Joy will be joining us momentarily for the Dace Group Roundtable. Let us know what you think about what we think via the stevedace.com inbox. You can email us, steve at stevedace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Steve Dace Show. Look for, us, look for us as well at MeWe, Parlor Gab, and Getter. Look for Steve Dace there. And then you can look at clips of the show for free that are also free of censorship when you go to rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. Again, that's rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. Of course, Friday is always a big day. We'll have the Dace group here in a moment. We'll get to your feedback coming up as well. Also want to let you know that if you want to take advantage of these Still, historically low interest rates, and who knows how much longer they will remain. We just did a refi at our house and got an obscenely low rate. So if you want to take advantage of that as well, make sure first, though, you know exactly what your credit situation is so you don't get blindsided. Use the service that I used this year to make sure I could get the best possible rate that I was eligible for as well with our friends over at ScoreMaster because... The average ScoreMaster user can improve their score by up to 60 points sometimes in three weeks or less. That makes a big difference. Just the average improvement could make a big difference on not just qualifying, but the rates and terms that you can qualify for. Get the information. Don't be surprised. This is your life. It's your information. It's about you. You should go in there fully armed with the knowledge about you, not waiting on the banks or the lenders to tell you uh, what your situation really is. Find out why you've got the score you have exactly, and then exactly what you can do to get to the score you want. When you visit scoremaster.com slash Steve to get started today at scoremaster.com slash Steve. And now it's time for the day group. Your weekly look at the week that was is underway with issue one. Bleep, Lord Nefarious says. We cannot require someone to be vaccinated. That's just not what we can do. Needless to say, the right of women to make decisions about their own bodies is not negotiable. No, definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take a vaccine. We've never done that. Our interest is very simple from the federal government, which is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. It is a matter of privacy to know who is or who isn't. We don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand to be mandatory, but I would do everything in my power. It's like I don't think masks have to be made mandatory nationwide. One rule will be administered by OSHA and another by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Now, this OSHA rule, it applies to all private U.S. employers with 100 or more employees. That's 84 million U.S. workers in total, two-thirds of the U.S. workforce. Now, they'll be required to ensure that their employees are fully vaccinated for COVID-19 by January 4th. As long as not everybody is vaccinated, nobody will be safe. Um, But for our interpretation, we took a little twist on it. Here we have our adorable COVID-19 vaccine, but we added a twist. We added the booster. We put an actual uh, kid's booster, my son's booster, on the back of the costume, and our trick-or-treater is ready to go. She's got her COVID-19 passport (laughs) in the book there. And she's reminding everybody to go get your boosters. This is my daughter. Hi. She's nine. We're about to blind react to something. The COVID vaccine for kids is, so next week should be clear for kids through 5 to 11. What does that mean for you? I can go with my friends. Yeah. I can finally, you know, go outside. Was the Wall Street Journal report that, that Peter Ducey was asking about, is, is it garbage or not? 
Jake, this is one of these cases where the president is quite imprecise and leaves it to his staff and us to be the precise ones. So, so here are the true facts. The Wall Street Journal was correct not reporting garbage when it reported that the Biden administration is in discussions to settle lawsuits brought on behalf of families affected by the family separation policy. And the Wall Street Journal was correct in reporting that these settlement discussions include talks of possible financial compensation. Glenn Youngkin played the race card for a reason because he knows it works on certain white voters. He did stoke white grievance politics to mobilize the Republican base. He's laundered Trump's really sort of disgusting, flagrant out racism. He's wrapped it in education. Education, which is code for white parents don't like the idea of teaching about race. That's the fundamental problem for these parents and this anti-CRT movement. They don't like the way whiteness is being portrayed in these new, more inclusive lessons. It's still kind of breathtaking to me to see Nia, and uh, she's she's the black woman that was talking there on that CNN clip about Glenn Youngkin winning on racism. Nia used to call me all of the time, like six, seven, eight years ago. Used to call me all the time for both on and off the record comments on. Now I don't really talk off the record. I've never been anybody's anonymous source, and especially seven or eight years ago, I just needed to get my name out there as much as possible. So it was up to her to determine whether to put it on or off the record. I didn't care. But she would call me for on or off the record conversations about what was going on in broader Republican Party and conservative uh, politics and stuff all the time. Was seemed, you know, uh, you know my rule, if you lie to me, spin me one time, then I don't ever call you back, right? So, I mean, she was very uh, forthright, uh, very thorough, very conscientious. So I don't know if she just kind of, lost her mind in the last seven or eight years, if she was lying to me then, or she's now um, doing this for money on CNN now. I, I, I don't know, but it just, it blows my mind knowing how many times I've spoken to that woman, one-on-one, just to see her become really a minstrel, a puppet um, for this pagan spirit of the age. But let's get to the first question. Shannon, ladies get to go first as well as the guest here, and in your case, both apply. Uh, what was the worst thing sharded out by Joe Biden or anybody else uh, in that montage this week? I think for me, it was the doubling down of the Biden administration and the COVID fascists on this mass vaccination campaign that is aimed squarely at our children, which is is so distressing and should be so distressing to every American, despite the walloping that they got on Tuesday in uh, these elections, what happened at our school boards across the country, what happened in Virginia, I think it should be concerning to every American that rather than reposturing, triangulating, or moving back from this, they are doubling down on it. They are pushing the pedal to the metal. And that's concerning to me. Why the hubris? Why are they so brazen? What is it that they don't that they know that we don't know that uh, propels them to continue with uh, this program when so many Americans are saying so clearly and loudly from every corner of the country that we are sick of the lockdowns, the mandates, the masking, but specifically these vaccine mandates. It's concerning. Totally agree with that. Well said, Todd. Well, it's uh, not only your gal there, but if you go through the words that everybody is saying in that montage about white guilt, it's amazing. They, they're saying verbatim what they do. You, you, Nina, that's her name? Yes, She's Nia. Nia. Yeah. This, this stuff, they're doing this because this stuff works with a certain class of white individual. Th- that's what they do. They know it works, and they've gotten away with doing it. The, the whole white guilt thing has been a gold mine for them. And then you just keep going down if you, with each person's lament there. They're, they're just always guilty, always guilty of the very thing that they accuse other people of. And it's no more true than in this case because they're they're spewing out their level of regret that there's there's uh, backlash on them now the boomerang effect is in fact happening and it can't be embodied more i just saw before we go into this segment did you see 
in Loudoun County, the mother of yeah. the 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 the, yeah. the boy who thinks he's a girl who committed these two rapes mm-hmm. gave her own account or testimony. Her mask, a rainbow mask. Shocking. Is this the one where she said he just went in there because he wanted sex? Yep. Well, and that it's her fault. It's the girl's yeah. fault because she didn't fight back hard enough. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So the, the, she, she's proving my point. They're they're always guilty of the very very thing that they have Exa- yes. convinced you for so yep. long to go away, to moderate your tone, to feel guilty about. It's appalling. Our, we don't have journalism anymore by any measure. These people are enemies of the state. It's it, That's objectively true now. If you've learned anything in the last few years, if you're a critical thinker, and I, I will admit, I was, one of the, I was one of the later arrivers to this party, okay? But if, you, if you're a critical thinker, if you haven't learned this, then you're not a critical thinker. Or you just are... Uh, you refuse to admit it because it will cost you too much to do so. Every narrative they want to ban you for articulating will like give the benefit of the doubt to that. All right, give the benefit of the doubt to every narrative, everything they likely, like our friend Emerald Robinson is in Twitter jail for a week and got taken off the air over at Newsmax for something she tweeted and put on her Substack, And it's about a tracking um, a ingredient in the COVID vaccines that on her Substack, when you read the article, she just pulled it right out of their own patent ingredient information, if you can obtain it. Now, I, I, I like Emerald a lot, but, you know, I'm not like married to her. You know, we've not had dinner together. Uh, I don't know her that well on a personal level. So I know her work very well. So is it possible that, you know, she just totally forged these documents and put up false um, evidence on her Substack page? It's possible, right? Sure. Sure. But, but it's not like she just like theorized this. She cited specific documentation. I mean, that's, that's a verifiable fact one way or the other, right? Yes. Either she forged these things and or, and or misrepresented what they mean or they're true. That's pretty cut and dried. It either happened or it didn't. Either that's in there or it's not. Or, or at the very least, it's in their documentation that she cited or it's not. Is anybody, the management, anybody over at Newsmax? That is a news organization, right? Mm-hmm. Can they, are they, are they not interested? I mean, I'd want to know if my White House reporter put out false information on her Substack page or not, right? So why wouldn't I go out there and try to like verify whether that's true or not? They aren't interested. Because they're not interested in the truth, not even at Newsmax. That's why. So if you're a critical thinker, here's the bottom line for you. Give the benefit of the doubt to absolutely every narrative that you would be banned for articulating. How many times has Zero Hedge been proven right, Aaron, three, six, nine months later, for example? Okay. Uh, so so give, give the benefit of the doubt to every narrative that you will be banned for, for sharing. Give no benefit of the doubt to anything that comes from corporate media, corporate America, or any, or any institution that operates corporately. Period. End of sentence. Doesn't mean now. Did I say automatically trust? Did no. I say that? No. Did I say automatically don't trust no matter what evidence is presented? Did I say that? No. No. I didn't. But I, I'm specifically saying narratives. There's one side that the last few years has shown. Give them the benefit of the doubt, and another side don't give them any benefit of the doubt at all. Aaron, what say you? I would say the nine-year-old girl there whose mother has apparently kept her inside for the last almost two years. Surely she's gone out. And I can't imagine, but I, I want to say, oh, Dr. Fauci, what, what you have wrought. But this conversation already, it's the chicken or egg. Did, did COVID make people go crazy or did COVID reveal the crazy within? I think more and more it's, it's the latter. Unfortunately, the, the crazy that the need to be a part of a, a cult, the need to be a part of something that that was there as well. But the desire to enslave others, really, even your own kids. That's a hallmark of 
progressivism. It has reached its tentacles into every single household, or at least tried, in this country. The core tenet of progressivism is power. Power over what? Power over things? Power over widgets? Yes. But most of all, power over people. I've said this before. I will keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. The, the modern progressive, at least the modern Western progressive, would rather enslave you than kill you. You really can't have any more power over a person once they're dead, can you? Right. You can have power over their memory. Mm -hmm. But you really don't have any power over that person once they're dead. When they're still alive, though, two masks, three masks, two masks, one booster shot, two booster shots, four bo booster shots. That's right. the real power. Do this. Right. Don't do that. Six feet, ten feet. That's the real power that they crave. That's not a crazy mother and her child. That is progressivism at its core, what we saw there. By the way, quote just breaking from former President Donald Trump. Quote, talking about um, giving COVID vaccines to children in general, not even mandating them. Quote, the children are strong. Their immune systems are strong. They're not affected like especially older people that have some kind of a problem, whether it's diabetes or something. Those people I definitely would strongly recommend, but children are different. It's just not the same problem with children. So no, I would generally speaking not recommend it for children. Let's get to the... So there may be part of the pivot that we've been wondering, would we at see at some point here? Okay. Let's get to the exit question. On a scale of one to 10, with one being the odds, Lindsey Graham's grinder burner account name is I Sharded. Uh, and 10 being the odds that Graham actually hates every South Carolina conservative who has naively and pathetically voted for him all these years. Rank this week's level of total depravity. Todd. 10. Shannon. The vicious predators are coming after our children. I'm at a 10. 10 just based on the ranking alone. All right. And hey, we got a 10 out of Shannon. That's not easy to do around here. Okay. That's dark. That it's is. On. That, that is. It's on. Or is she, it's dark, or is she just said, it's on. Hey, and we just articulated you've got a million reasons to be stressed out these days, right? All right. Uh, one of them should not, though, be male pattern baldness or your receding hairline. If you want to go to our friends over at Keeps and get the same doctor recommended FDA approved hair loss treatment, but the generic versions, so that you'll save all kinds of money, and then you'll save all kinds of time. Everything's done online. Just answer a few easy questions, snap a few pics of your hair, and then a licensed physician will give you the right recommended hair loss treatment for you, so you save money with the generics, time online. How about even more money to get you started? 50% off your first order today when you go to keeps.com slash grow, K-E-E-P-S, for keeps.com slash grow. Again, half off your first order today when you go to keeps.com slash grow let's get to issue two yes virginia there's at least some hope going into tuesday night's election in virginia there was as you can imagine a great deal of hand wringing about what could shape up to be a bellwether state for american politics in the next few years an early referendum on the wokistan infesting every level of the federal government and some state governments as well what if the side of dudes in skirts raping girls, critical racist theory, anti-parent involvement, and COVID stand won? Well, they didn't, and for the first time in 12 years, a Republican won not only a single statewide election, Republicans took back lieutenant governorship and the attorney general's office as well. Since the Obama years, Virginia, typically a red state or purple at best, has been solid blue, but the state's shift to the right this week was incredibly stark, as seen in this map from the New York Times. Leaning into cultural issues, the campaigns of Glenn Youngkin and new Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears promised to curve woke ideologies taught in schools and empower parents to make their own choices for their own kids. Now the question becomes not what the newly elected Republican leadership will do in Virginia, but whether Virginians will hold them accountable to their campaign promises. So Shannon, we have already, the three of us, broken this down quite a bit earlier this week. So let's get a fresh take from a different voice. Let's start with you. What happened in Virginia this week? Why did it happen? And what do you think happens now? I think that we are witnessing an actual populist revolution. I think this is the beginning of it in this country, an awakening. Um, I don't know that the GOP and conservative talkers are correctly reading the tea leaves 
They are saying, you know, that this happened because Virginians are sick of high taxes, big government, crime. And yes, they're attributing it to Loudoun County and CRT. And I can say from being very active in uh, parent groups across the country and here in New York, yes, parents are concerned about CRT. But I think the larger issue, they're missing what people are truly concerned about. And it is the masking the shutdowns, the lockdowns, the control, the tyranny, and 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 the largest issue, the elephant in the room, so to speak, that I think the elephants are missing are these vaccine mandates and vaccine injury. Uh, the one, nearly one million VARES reported serious adverse events and deaths. This is an issue, it's a hot tea kettle that you cannot get a Republican politician to touch. And even in the stirring speech that was made by Winsome Sears that everyone cheered, you notice uh, she talked about her first you know, step in her administration is fully funding predominantly black colleges and lowering taxes. They would not mention this issue of getting the kids out of the masks, getting rid of the school mandates. I mean, honestly, like what is the point of cutting taxes if Americans are absolutely crushed by massive inflation? What is the point of getting rid of CRT if half of American students are gonna be thrown out of public schools in a month or two months because they don't meet the vaccine requirements? What is the point of all of that if our kids are forced masks? So, so it's the population, the people are just exhausted, frustrated, irritated, and, and quite frankly, terrified about these vaccines now that more and more Americans are beginning to realize that they are toxic, they are dangerous, and we are facing potentially losing our livelihoods, everything, everything, because this administration is intent on doubling down and the Republicans will not address those major issues. So it's good news, but to your point and what you guys so, um, uh, beautifully articulated in, in the past couple shows, it really is just the beginning. The next step is for our political elites, corporate elites, uh, state uh, GOP politicians, for them to actually understand what the American people are saying. And I think we're saying we're over it. It's done. We're, we're done with the tyranny. We want to move on. And they just haven't gotten there yet. Shannon, through the first 42 weeks of 2021, all cause excess mortality in this country is 50% higher right. than it was through the first 42 weeks of 2020. No vaccines in 2020. Okay. Right. How, so, so what is the benign, innocent explanation for that? What would it be? What would it possibly be? It's the vaccines. And this is well, that why wouldn't be a benign and innocent explanation to most people. Uh, so, so, let, let's, so, so let's, let's have fun with thinking. Let's set the vaccines aside for a second. Let's play Occam's razor. What else would it be? I, See, I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the answer is. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what a benign, innocent explanation is. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what is it none. is. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Todd? Well, again, I I'm just need to go right back to where I was in the last answer. You know, so you never know. It's 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 heaping on top of uh, uh, piles of garbage and filth. Again, the I got vaccinated. Now my kids still have to mask. All of the lies. Well, turns out that if you've been t drinking the rainbow uh, jihad's lies and parroting them for a long, long time, and then they abuse that to such an extent that they. Uh, say boys can become girls, they can charge into your bathroom and take your sports, and then they can rape you and blame it on you because you're too weak to fight back. I guess that's what it took. That's appalling and disgusting that that's what it took, but apparently that's what it took in this case. That really happened. So wh where do we go from here? You know, Steve laid it out uh, as well. A lot of it does depend on Yunkin. Is he a guy? Because he's going to be called all the names. You're racist, sexist, homophobe, all that stuff. How can you bear up to that? And then are, are the people who finally got fed up in this case, 
are they going to go on or are they just going to sit by and think that the fight is over there I, Shannon is absolutely right. This isn't even close to a... Th th this is going to be one of those Pyrrhic victories if everybody just sits back because the left will have learned again you don't have the energy and the resolve that we have to yep. fight the fight. Yep. So it's, it, this isn't even close to over, folks. I mean, uh, the woman in Loudoun County, that's her son. Remember... Re remember now, the worst school shooting of all time, even though I think rape should also be a capital crime, but the worst school shooting in American history, I'm not making a moral equivalency here, but a situational one. Remember the, 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 the school shooting in Colorado? Mm -hmm. What was that, almost 20 years ago now? Maybe more. And remember the parents. Because people question, how did you not know that this was going on in your home? That mm -hmm. they had built an armory, they were watching these films, yeah. they were acting out like this. Remember how they essentially just like went underground. They were just like, they realized they had failed. They were ashamed. They didn't know what to say, mm -hmm. right? This woman's son raped a girl. Two. That Two, that I'm sorry. Know of. Yeah, yes. And, 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 and she wants to show her face. Well, half of it anyway, went behind yeah. the, the rainbow flag of a mask, okay? Yeah. Th this, is a, this is what Todd is talking about, what I've been warning about all week long. The level of commitment here we are up against, understand. Yes. It's not going to go away. And there will, and by the way, there is no amount of elections you'll ever win that it will go away because you can't vote your way out of it. Okay? There will not be like some seminal election. All right, the tide has turned. No, you're going to have to keep defeating this until it is defeated. And it will not be defeated strictly by voting alone, but by a shared willingness to defeat it every bit as much as it is willing to defeat you. Aaron, you get the last word. I think what this was uh, best akin to this is like a Higgins bro a boat landing on on the uh, on the beaches of of Normandy. We got one or two of them. That, that's how you have to view this. It's a long, bloody battle. Um, that's the, you know it it was an accomplishment to get them to the beach. Yes, that's an accomplishment. You still got to go take the beach. You still got to go take the, uh, the the turrets and the fortifications. Great analogy. As well. Yep. Th this is what it's going to take. I, I've used this. I've used this um, this analogy before. What were there two or three kings in the Old Testament of Israel who actually it's noted that they went down and, and tore down the high places. The high places, yeah, like Josiah. Like Josiah. What, yep. That was one of them. Uh, that's what's going to be required here. We have to go down and tear down the high places, and that is. That's rare when that happens in a culture, but that's what has to be done, and it's difficult to. Great, great analogy there. Uh, good analysis by all three of you. Let's get to the exit question. True or false? Nancy Pelosi will retire from Congress rather than face the wrath of the voters next year. Aaron. True. Todd. False. Why are you a false out of curiosity? Because she's utterly depraved and oh, okay well, just, i guess you're gonna put it that way aaron why are you a true really quick because she's utterly depraved <laughs> <laughs> all right shannon you get to be you get to be the tiebreaker here go ahead false that woman's not giving anything up she'll prop herself up she'll fill herself full of botox i mean they're gonna have to wheel her in there but she there's no way do i have to there's ask no you way. why do we already know? We already she, have the answer. She's clueless. She, they are so clueless. She probably thinks everyone loves her and she's doing a great job. They look at themselves in the mirror and they tell themselves how wonderful they are. I mean, yeah. they just don't get it. All right. Let them eat imported ice cream. I hear you. Okay. All right. We'll come back. Let, exactly. let, let, let's have a bit of a, a frank conversation about the conservative movement and conservative media based on what's going on with Dan Bongino right now and Cumulus and who is and isn't speaking up about this. We'll talk about that when we return. All right, back here on the Steve Day Show here on Blaze TV Radio and Podcast. You know, you got 360 joints from your neck down to each vertebra in your back, your arms, hips, knees, feet. It's a lot of places for inflammation to creep in and create that lingering, nagging pain, soreness, and that's usually 
what the cause of that lingering nagging pain and soreness is, inflammation. And if you want to deal with that infl- inflammation with an all-natural, proven, effective anti-inflammatory, backed by over three decades of clinical research and the last couple of years of my own personal testimony using it, Check out our friends over at Omega XL. Help to rejuvenate your joints and muscles to get beyond that inflammation causing your chronic pain. And they're offering you right now, buy your first bottle or any bottle, buy a bottle, get a second one for free. Buy one, get one free today when you go to OmegaXL.com slash Steve. Again, that's OmegaXL.com slash Steve, or you can give them a call at 800-844-4888. 800-844-4888. Let's welcome back in New York talk show host Shannon Joy here as we continue on with our weekly look at the week that it was. And let's get to issue three here on the Dace Group. What do you mean we, Lone Ranger? It all started a few weeks ago when conservative talk show superstar Dan Bongino made this announcement on his Cumulus radio show. Imagine the countless number of individuals trying to explain to them. these companies ever thought of that? The countless numbers of moms and dads who are sitting at some kitchen table explaining to their kids how they may have to move out, how daddy doesn't have a job because a bunch of people in a C-suite thought it'd be a good idea to sit around and play pretend Dr. Fauci for a moment and mandate people jam something in their bodies that they don't want to take. You ever put yourself in that, in that role? You ever put yourself at that kitchen table with mom and dad telling their kids that? Imagine how the kids respond, that fear they got to live with. You know, I grew up without a lot of money. My mom used to make bologna sandwiches for dinner. And when the bologna was no good, you'd cook it and you'd make it good right quick, right? I'm not leaving any of those guys behind. You can have me or you can have the mandate. But you can't have both of them. Now he says he's locked in a heated dispute with his bosses at Cumulus over his stance on the corporation's vaccine mandate. So why am I coming back today while these negotiations are still going on? There has been some some movement there that I like, um, which is good. But why back today? Well, folks, I didn't want to do this because I'd like you to believe, especially after a day like yesterday, that, you know, we have a strong unified conservative movement and everything we're all aligned with the same values and you know we'll celebrate the victory here in a minute i don't want to sound macabre but i don't want to play pollyanna nonsense with you either it's not like that behind the scenes in this business there are a lot of very jealous envious people and that's putting it mildly because i'm trying to be nice and a lot of them i guess what we would call the conservative ink crowd are largely concerned about where they're going to get their next million bucks or their next radio contract, and they're not really concerned about actual conservative stuff. I'll leave you to figure out who those people are. But whereas I could have used a lot of their support here while I was dangling out here on my own, fighting this vaccine mandate at this company, many of them decided to go behind the scenes and leak to the left-wing media to try to shut me up because it was putting pressure on them. Hmm. First question. What does it mean that Dan Bongino was kind of out there risking his livelihood, or at least a portion of it? He still would have a very successful podcast, a show on Fox News, but trust me, um, the magnitude of his radio show, we're talking millions of dollars would be taken out of his bottom line for it to go away. Uh, what is what does it mean that he's kind of out there risking this all by himself among elite conservative media personalities? He has one of the top five, ten overall most listened to podcast in the country, regardless of format. Um, or that more of them have not had his back. What does it mean? Todd, I'll start with you this time. It just means it's the same as it ever was. This is not new or unique to COVID or the vaccine uh, mandate. It's get it's actually getting uh, a little hot in here because of that but uh, this is your career steve yep this is your career why why are you where you're at and not higher when you're the guy who picks as many fights pound for pound as anybody in this industry could possibly fight in the name of the things this industry claims to care about yet why are we uh, as you always say uh a nice, upper middle moderate, class upper middle class home. Yeah. Uh, why is that? 
it's 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 the same thing. It's the same thing. The scam artists, the ones on the fringe, say, "Hey, there's the battlefield. There it is. Everybody, rally around. Bring your pom poms." And then the guys are like, "Um, anybody ever gonna go kick some ass? I'd like to. Can we do this?" Ah, I don't know. My deadline for a new white paper about how we do nothing but say we do something. This is another day that ends in Y, brother. I remember when we were at Salem and one of their highest ranking executives came to me and said, uh, with our nighttime show, and they were great to us. They carved out a time slot for us and uh, we enjoyed our time with them. But we had an interesting conversation I did with one of their mucky mucks ones who came to me and said, you know, what you're doing is and how you're doing it. And I wasn't like going on the air and comparing myself to what Michael Medved and Hugh Hewitt were saying earlier in the day. I just did. We just did our own show. I didn't even know what they were saying earlier in the day, frankly. But the listeners would tune in and listen to these Salem stations all day long, and we would come on at 9 o'clock Eastern and just have a dramatically different spin on things than everybody else did. So they just noticed it on the, the, their own, and they started calling these other people and their other shows and emailing them and saying, hey, is this true? Why aren't we doing this instead, right? Okay, and it was, it was making life a little bit more problematic and difficult that I had a different narrative than everybody else did. And... The, the problem to, to what you just said, if you let a show that, does, that challenges the narratives get an elite level of success, our, our audiences want that. After, 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 me, after what I did to call out Bill O'Reilly Friday, guys, I'm just telling you right now, I got people emailing me vigilante lists. Go after this guy next. Like, this guy sold us out. This person lied about the vaccines. Go after, I mean, folks want me to go f- get a cape and cow man and just fire up the dark night and just start just, you know tagging bodies. I mean, my inbox is exploding with anger. People who want to see more of that level of confrontation intra-squad here. And what happened is that Dan Dan did on Russian collusion what we have done on COVID. And it blew his entire platform stratospheric. And now and and, and then he got on Fox. And then he got on Cumulus, one of the large, if not the largest radio network. He already had one of the top 10 podcasts. And so here's a guy that blows up all the narratives and gets mega successful. Well, that, of course, as you said, puts pressure on the people that aren't blowing up these narratives, Mm -hmm. right? And the attention and everything is on them. And so if you've got a chance to get rid of this guy and take him down so that it stops pressuring you to take stances on behalf of your audience as opposed to your bottom line or your brand power, uh, yeah, I can absolutely see. That's why I've been just beyond the principle on a personal level I completely get what the pressure that he is under at a mega level because this would have happened to us if we had been able, if the, if the Overton window had permitted us to get through to the level that he is at right now. That's exactly what we would be facing. How dare you? It's the R.C. Sproul senior story that he tells, the, the late R.C. Sproul tells the story about the first woman he ever had in his, uh, his theology class at his seminary. And, and, and she, w- she was there in order to meet a husband and get married and meet a man that wanted to serve in ministry and lead a church. And she wanted to be by, by his side. And it just turned out she was the best dang student he had in his class. Well, his class was so hard, he graded on a curve. And so instead of all the guys in the class looking at her and saying, that is some marriage material because she also ain't too tough to look at, right? Instead, they all shunned her. And so on the next exam, she bombs it. He calls her into her office. And says, hey, I know you know this material as almost as well as I do. Why'd you bomb it? She breaks down crying. Because the men don't like, I came here to find a husband and none of them will talk to me mm-hmm. now because I'm at the top of the curve and it's making life harder on them. So instead of raising the stakes and saying, you know what, man, I can go radical too. And I kind of always wanted to. I just didn't think maybe it was permitted. Nope, nope. Let's beat down the guy who, who actually proved that our paradigm sucked. That's what this is. Shannon, go ahead. You know, Dan Bongino is exposing something that we have been talking about when you say conservative ink, right? It is this very difficult realization that I think conservatives have now come to. The, all of the criticisms that we heaped on the GOP and rhinos and Republicans, we are now beginning to face the, the fact that so many in our so-called conservative media are big talkers, but that's it. It's a racket. It's a game. It's a business. And and Dan Bongino exposed cumulus, right? This is supposed to be a distributor of right-wing conservatism, our constitution, our liberty, low taxes, yet they are embracing the worst, the worst of medical fascism. And so they hate that. 
They have to squash that. And Dan Bongino is doing something very brave here, but he also is elevating himself. In the way that the Republicans do are not reading the tea leaves correctly right now, Dan Bongino, to be completely cliche, he has his finger on the pulse of the American people. He is understanding. There was a great piece from Epic Times, two great pieces that profiled nurses, EMTs, firefighters, police officers, and pilots, and asked them, why are you willing to risk your job? You're willing to lose everything, right? That's a major story. Why is it that you're doing that? And they were long pieces. And the reason is because these individuals are on the front line. They are seeing the vaccine injury and death. They are going to the homes. They're getting the reports from the people. They're seeing their colleagues drop dead, unable to work. Pilots, airline workers, they are working at high elevation. They're at high risk for blood clots. They're seeing people. People are seeing the death and the devastation happening because of these vaccines, but it's a bottleneck, right? Everyone down here sees it. But once they get to the hospital, once they get to the level where it can be reported to VAERS or the administration reports it to the media, no one's talking about it. Not the media, not the politicians, not conservative media. And so what Bongino is seeing is, is reality. He's hearing from what is actually happening in people's lives and he is now embracing it and he's doing what no other big talkers have done. He is walking the walk rather than talking the talk. And that is what needs to happen. We need people with courage to stand up and address the elephant in the room. And that is the vaccine issue, which none of them, and I've been covering vaccines for six years, none of them are willing to touch. They're going to have to touch it because it's in their faces now. Aaron? I, I think I, I couldn't really uh, do a, um, a better job than, than Todd. This is... This is media in general, but it seems especially within conservative media because the root word of conservatism is conserve. That, that presupposes that there are some things worth conserving, meaning there is some sort of transcendent truth, i.e. standards, that we have to conserve. People don't like to be held to, the, to, to standards. That's why progressives have such an easy time in the media. It's like pinning jello to a door, to a wall. You can't do it because they are out in pursuit of power. Whatever I need to be true today is true if it helps me in the pursuit of power. As conservatives, we don't get to roll like that. So when people like you, people like Dan Bongino, take actual stands that are rooted in some of that transcendent truth, that automatically, without even going after those other figures, that automatically puts the screws to them and they don't like it. They don't like it at all. That's a threat. That means that they then have to be uncomfortable as well. And they don't like that because, don't you know, they got another book deal coming down the pike and they want to make the top 10 in the New York Times bestseller list as well. By the way, Dan's not even the only conservative radio show on Cumulus, by the way, not by a long shot. I mean, there's several, including some of the biggest names in the entire industry. So... Let's get to the exit question. If the amount of superstar conservative media, and, and I mentioned that because they could have done this and they chose not to. Uh, if the amount of superstar conservative media you actually trust to stand with us when the bullets are flying were a Hall & Oates song, which Hall & Oates song would it be? A, Kiss is on my list. B, I can't go for that. C, out of touch. Aaron. Mm, C. Todd. C. Shannon. C. All right, we are short on time. Quickly, give me a, just a quick name. Who's, a, who's, the, who's where Dan Bongino was five years ago, six years ago? Somebody that deserves more recognition uh, that because of the, the work that they do and don't give a self-serving answer. Todd. Shannon Joy. Okay, Shannon. Oh, uh, I like Open Vares and the COVID blog as platforms. Pulitzer pl Prize winning work done okay. there. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, I, I personally like the American mind. I know that's a publication, not yeah. a person. But. No, but that's an instant. That's kind of a think tank that's on the rise. Yeah. That, that's a good one too. Those are good answers. All right, let's get to our predictions here to close it out. Shannon, you get to go first. I predict that within 30 days, Steve Dace will be on the streets protesting with a bullhorn. <laughs> well, 30 days from now, man, is winter. All right, so keep or close. Oh, you're going to be out there. All right. 30 days, maybe 60 days. It's winter. 
Okay. Even I've got my even I've got my uppity limits, and winners one of them. All right. Go ahead, Todd. Well, and those protests are going to be centered around uh, across America. This is uh, a, a, a mandatory vaccination uh, for children. School uh, opening or closing. Are you being allowed to go? Depending on that, that's common. We just had one of the best football programs in Los Angeles, by yep. the way, had to shut their season down. Crenshaw High School, five-time city champion, because only 13 of the players are vaccinated, and they don't have enough players to to honor the city's vaccine mandate. By the way, that I think something like 90% of that district is black, by the way. Todd, or Aaron. The Kansas City Chiefs will win the AFC West. I'm going to make a prediction I do not want to be true. But... I think it's going to turn out to be true, which is why I'm going to make it. Amy Coney Barrett is going to vote against the Texas pro-life law. Yep. Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett will vote against the Texas pro-life law, joining John Roberts and then the three, uh, the three uh, uh, spirit of the agers. And then it's just a matter of whether they think Brett Kavanaugh has got to take the hit this time or not. But that'll be five. I, I, I hope I'm wrong. But I have never seen a faster disappointment in my entire career. Uh, at this point, we are hoping that she's just saving up all her political capital to wreck Roe with the Mississippi law, right? Okay? Because the alternative is these, are, these Owens have some bad mojo. Okay? Shannon, good to see you as always. Take care. Have a great weekend. All right. God bless. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll come back. Feedback Friday is next. Stay tuned. Back with Hour 2, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. Steve Dace here with Aaron McIntyre and Todd Erzin. And, of course, there's all of you. Let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. Steve at SteveDace.com is how you can email the program. That's D E A C E. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Steve Day Show, and then you can look for me as well on platforms that don't censor us. Me, we parlor, gab, and getter. You can also go to rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. Again, that's rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. Get clips of the show there that are free to watch and also censorship free. If you are a podcast listener, we thank you so very much. Uh, you are a big part of this program's success. Please, if you haven't done so already, leave us a five-star review. Hit subscribe or follow wherever you podcast from. And thank you to all of you, the many, many thousands of you that have done those things for us already. We greatly appreciate it. Before we get to Feedback Friday, let us tell you about Start Roll. You know, free email services like Gmail and Yahoo are not really free. Uh, You're paying with your privacy. Uh, In fact, the internet giants uh, like big tech, they bank on exploiting your data by selling it to the highest bidder. If you've got a business plan, chances are Google has it, your medical records, Yahoo can sell those to drug companies, and on and on it goes. That's why you want to go with Start, S-T-A-R-T, Start Mail. It keeps your email private, period. Every email can be encrypted, even if the, if, even if the recipient doesn't use encryption as well. And when you delete something via Start Mail, it is gone forever. They also have their own servers. They don't use an, a third party like an Amazon, so they can't get parlored, if you will. Making the switch to Start Mail is seamless. You can easily transfer all your current email data. There's no starting over from scratch. So if you want to get started with Start Mail, all right, here's how. Secure your email privacy today and get 50% off your first year when you go to startmail.com Steve. S-T-A-R-T, the word start, startmail.com slash Steve. Again, 50% off today at startmail.com slash Steve. So let's get to some Feedback Friday. You guys ready to go? Yes. You bet. This is from Austin Zinzer. He says, I live in Eastern Oregon, what I consider to be the sane half of the state. Like a disgruntled lemming, I played along with the first round of mask mandates. I would wear one when shopping or while at work when interacting with customers. Then mask mandates were lifted for the vaccinated. And while not vaccinated, I got rid of my masks, knowing that they could not ask me if I was vaccinated. Now, Oregon's governor or dictator uh, is mandating for all school teachers and healthcare workers to be vaccinated or to be fired. This impacted my wife as she has worked as a technician in an ophthalmologist office for nearly 10 years. Her employer, unwilling to accept religious exemptions, gave her an ultimatum or get the jab, to get the jab or lose her job. 
My wife is unfortunately not a fighter and is elected to find new employment. Dictator, Dictator Brown also mandated mask use in all indoor settings and is now added to that by including some outdoor settings. I was very irritated by the reemergence of the mask mandate, but then I realized something. My entire life I have felt out of place and like I did not belong, but now I understand why. I am a masked man trapped inside an unmasked man's body. Now, understand, when a, when a boy wants to rape your daughter in a school, he, he's able to identify as a girl trapped in a boy's body and walk right in and rape her. I mean, I, I get the funnies. And I think, and I love the funnies because the scorn and mockery is, I think, one of the best tactics we have. Our colleague, Ali Stuckey, put out a tweet yesterday. Welcome to Clown World, where the dude on the left, and it was... Um, Rachel Levine, where the dude on the left is considered a pioneering woman and the woman on the right, and it was the black LG newly elected in Virginia, uh, the woman on the right is a white supremacist. I I love that level of scorn and mockery. But understand, though, with the stakes, I I just want to keep reiterating this. I mean... You know what? Yeah, I'm going to. I mean, imagine, hypothetically speaking, you put out a book talking about the encroaching Marxism in America. That America was returning to Soviet style, or reverting, I should say, to a Soviet style of system and government and culture. And it's all true. And because it's all true, it sold like millions of copies. And then when they attempted to impose that very Sovietism on the people that bought all those damn books. And again, hypothetically speaking, your colleague on that very radio, on the same radio network that you hypothetically might be on, takes a stand against it and you are completely silent. When everything you wrote in that book, hypothetically speaking, everything you wrote in that book is coming true right now. And a lot of people in your audience spent, may have hypothetically spent $35, $40 to buy the hardcover version of that millions of times. Do we understand here the stakes that we are playing for? Do we understand? good friend of mine called me this morning and he wanted to talk about what happened in Virginia in the aftermath. And he said, um, you know, I really think the messaging for 2024 and he said it a couple times and, and I thought it was, a, I thought he was just a, you know, making a mistake. I said, you mean 2022? He goes, no, no, no I'm talking about the president. I said, brother, this is not a time to be making three year plans right now. Make three month plans. We are going places. We're not even on the brink of these things. We're going there. We're going there. Unless we stop them. To stop them, we need all hands on deck. We need the people that have, that have made millions and millions of dollars selling millions and millions of copies of books, uh, warning that this day may come to actually use their platforms to help us now that that day has arrived. It is here. That day is here now. They took a 90 plus percent black high school in L.A. yesterday and they shut down their football program because teenagers who are not really vulnerable or vectors of the virus at all uh, aren't fully vaccinated. Now, if they're going to do that to the to the groups of folks that they're used to um, mascotting, For their own political power? What are they going to do to you? What are they going to do to you? 
far worse if they could. And they're going to try. So, Austin, you may live in the sane half of Oregon. How sane is it? When Dictator Brown decides in January that no one in the state will go to school, even kindergartner, unless, they were, unless they've been injected, is your sane half of the state, what are they going to do, Austin? Grumble, complain, blog, wait to vote for more Republicans, buy more $40 hardcover books about the, about the coming Sovietism, or are they going to stop this? Because none of the things I mentioned will stop it. That's what we've done for 20 plus years. It's made a lot of people during that time who are doing for a living what I'm doing now an insane amount of money. It hasn't stopped any of this at all. Now, I know what it takes to stop it because I've, I've been parts of efforts that did it. This is still the only state in American history that has fired Supreme Court justices by popular vote. We did it. It took months to organize that. The amount of, the amount of enemies we had to make, we had the Catholic archdiocese come out against us. We had conservative leaders come out against us. We had former Republican gubernatorial nominees come out against us. We had, we had to fracture our own coalition of friends in order to get this done, but we did. It's that scene in the Luther film that you quote all the time, Todd. Did you think there would be no cost? Did you, Luther says, did you think I would just get to go to the door of Wittenberg, itemize, not just say the emperor has no clothes, but then itemize the reasons he doesn't. And, they were, and the emperor was going to be like, oh, yeah, no big. No, he's going to get big mad. That's what was going to happen. How many of you, if you really thought that by the end of the year, you'd be facing, get a waning trash, vac, waning efficacy trash vaccine that doesn't stop you from either getting or giving someone else the, the virus, or you're out of a job. How many, would, how many of you would have bought $40 cover hardcover books from your favorite conservative star? How many would have bought this book in bulk at Amazon when you made our book number one? How many would have done that? Because right now my inbox is full of people that don't know where their next paycheck's coming from. And, and even if, then if you get the jab, and as Ron DeSantis said about an hour ago, it won't be enough. Soon those of you who are fully vaccinated, you will be called unvaccinated too until you get more and more boosters. That is coming. They've even hinted, they've already hinted at this and DeSantis is right. So even if you comply this time, cool. Been to the grocery store lately? So now you give up your bodily autonomy to keep a job that won't even pay your bills. Because you're getting Dutch doored here, man. Screwed on the way in and screwed on the way out. And I just think those of us that you guys have supported and given us the positions and platforms we have to get to do this for a living rather than, you know, roof or... You know, fix drywall or go down mine shafts with flashlights. I just think maybe we need more of an answer for you guys and more. We, sh we need to be there a little bit more for you then. Here's another $40 hardcover book. I just think we need a little bit more because you deserve it. Because this thing's teetering on the freaking brink right now. Right now. If we don't have, a, if, if the Republican Party, these, the, the people that we want to go out and vote for right now, the Glenn Youngkins of the world, as the alternative, if they don't stand up for us with the power we give them, the only thing standing between you and New Zealand and Australia is what's on the gun rack in your home. And we all know it. This is our last chance, peaceably, to preserve this thing called the last best hope for freedom here east of Eden. This is it. 
And what's hanging on that gun rack in your own home is the only reason you're not Australia and New Zealand right now. I don't want to hear about anybody's annual projections, what they've got slotted for next year. I'm in the business. I'm in the business right now making a movie. My company put up millions of dollars we didn't previously have, but this year we do have because of the success of the show and things like this book. We put up millions of dollars to fund the nefarious movie out of our company's pocket. So we're leveraged millions of dollars out of our pockets up front to make this movie. And folks, I can't tell you right now whether you'll be able to go see it in a theater or not. We don't know if the theaters will be open, whether they'll be open to people like us that won't comply. Who does that? Who puts up millions of dollars up front for an investment and they can't even tell you that they know what the distribution mechanism is for the product? Would anybody go with that business plan? No. Why did we do that? Because we're all looking at our watches over here and when the hour is late. We'll figure out the distribution plan later. We got to reach as many people with the message of this thing as we possibly can first. You guys all know this. Everybody right now within the sound of my voice, you know this. Because you're suffering under the brunt of this at a level that, frankly, most of the people you're listening to and the authors you're buying aren't. And they've earned that success. They've earned your trust. But now's the time that they need to listen to you more. Not forget where they came from. Because without you, there's no us. This is now here at The Blaze, one of the largest, most listened to podcast networks in America, regardless of platform. A year from now, we see another massive spike of inflation, another massive job losses. How many of you have the time to sit and listen to us? How many of you will have the amount have the money to then go and support our advertisers? Is your house getting foreclosed? They can give illegal aliens a half a million damn dollars, but if you lose your job because you won't get a jab, suddenly you're this is the one firing that doesn't qualify for unemployment. Austin, there is no sane half of Oregon. There's no sane half of New York. There's no sane half of California. The the creation runs on headship. So unless you're truly willing, they're not going to stop. They're not. And the reason they're not going to stop is because they've been taught they don't have to. For 30 years, we voted for Republicans who punished us instead of them when they got power. And so like any bully, they are emboldened. You gave them the Sudetenland. You didn't run them out of the Rhineland. So here we are now. And the stakes are colossus. Literal, we're going to literally play out a game called Civilization right now. We're going to do it. You're not in the same enclave of a blue state. You're not in the same neighborhood. You're not. Don't lie to yourself like that. You are going to have to openly defy your governor because they're going to put it on you. If you don't, they're absolutely going to try. So just as the people that you've supported all these years on my on my side of this conversation we need to listen a little bit more to you 
and be willing to suffer a little bit more with you and be willing to stand a little bit more for you? Those of you who think that you have cracked the code, you have found the one place in your blue state where this won't happen to you, you're wrong. If you live in a blue area in a red state, you are wrong. Like if you live in Dallas, where Blaze headquarters are at, you're wrong. They're going to try to put this on you. You're going to have to defy, resist, defeat. Demand the people you elect do their part in making it so. We're going to fight a civil war, guys. It's just going to be done in a purely political context, hopefully. But the other side here, this is they're going to go for broke. It's the degree all-in moment when you watch the World Series of Poker. They are all in. All in. In fact, they didn't even... It's pre-flop. They didn't even look at the cards that they're holding. They don't care. They're all in. It just doesn't matter. Because they believe you're a punk. They believe the people that you elect are pusses. It doesn't matter. They will just push you around. That's what they believe. And that's the one thing that they're most right about in their entire worldview. The rest is garbage. But that's some terra firma for them. Yes, It is the one thing they've been the most right about. Sadly, here's the good news. That's actually the easiest thing to correct because that's totally within our own purview to just stop being pushovers. We can control that. Stop subsidizing people who see you as a mark, as a commodity, but won't fight for you, won't bleed for you. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not 65. My kids aren't grown. One of them just left the home earlier this year. The other two are still in the middle of high school. I'm not independently wealthy. I'm having the same conversations in my home right now. What kind of world, what kind of country is going to get left behind for them? I'm not childless. This is going to come down to resolve. Resolve is weakened by lies when we lie to ourselves. You don't live in the same half of Oregon. And whoever you are, you don't live in the same half of Washington State. And whoever you are, you don't live in the same corridor of California. You have no shot to show the resolve necessary without being brutally honest with yourself. These people are insanity. This movement is insanity incarnate. And it wants to spread. It doesn't view you as a sanctuary. It views you as a mark, as a delicacy. And it's coming. Hypothetically speaking, of course. Tell you about our friends over at Built Bar. You know, I said yesterday that on fifth, um, on fifth attempt, the pumpkin uh, puff uh, Built Bar puff uh, Built Bar puff, I should say, the pumpkin puff still held up, right? But I told you I'm a skeptical sort, and chances are I was going to have to go through it a sixth time. Just to be on the safe side. You're all about data. You're looking for a trend line. I am totally different. I'm driven by data, as you well know. Yes. So uh, during the last break, I did go ahead and put the Built Bar's new pumpkin puff to the test for a sixth time. And that math still works. Uh, It still tastes good. Now, you know me. I'm never satisfied. So tomorrow, perhaps we might, or the day after, we might have to put it to the test again. But if you want to try the pumpkin Built Bar Puff or any of their outstanding flavors, One of their all-time greats is now back. Coconut brownie chunk, it's now back and it's there. Uh, And all of their regular everyday flavors. Cookies and cream is great. Cherry barcia is great. Mint, uh, the the, the mint brownie is phenomenal. All right, so give it all a shot today. Uh, Four to five grams of sugar per bar, four to five net carbs per bar. Loaded with protein, not loaded with calories. 
Um, it's the best protein bar you've ever had, and it rivals a lot of candy bars out there. Give it a shot today when you use my last name, Dace, as your promo code, or if you want to go back for more. Promo code DACE, that's D-E-A-C-E. Get 15% off your first order when you go to Built.com and you use the promo code DACE. 15% off your first order at Built.com with the promo code DACE. Christy writes, from the media setting up the narrative with the polls to justify stealing the election to the governor, shutting down their economies to destroy businesses and the CDC increasing the death count, it was a coup. They kicked us in the gut, told us we were stupid, and tried to convince us that the rest of the country was with them, but they weren't. I think most of the country voted for Trump and many more have been converted since. Although I spend time on Twitter to know how many fools are still out there. The question is, can they consolidate their grasp on power in the time that they have? They see us coming at the school board meetings and in 2022. So they have to get this irrevocably in their hands. They have to be able to print, spend money in order to control. And then they have to be able to cheat in the elections in order to win. Given their reaction to the horrible political implications of Kabul, they think they have succeeded because they don't care. They aren't changing course. They dance and laugh. We can eat cake. As such, I fear a huge crash. Something terrible is going to happen. We will be driven to our knees, and that is our only hope. It will, only get, it will get so bad that all the people will wake up. It may be too late for the country, but it won't be too late for the church. God always wins. You know, we've talked a lot on this show for years now about it's revival or bust. Some of you have said, you know, sometimes you have bust and then revival, and that's kind of what Christy is describing here, right? Aaron, sounds like you want to say something? Just moving the microphone closer, but it, I mean, <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> Dramatic lead up. I'm just moving my microphone, dude. <laughs> no, I mean, that's... That's what I was talking about yesterday, uh, talking about prayers in, in, in Theology Thursday. My constant prayer is that we would be humbled. Now, notice I didn't say uh, which way I'd like to be humbled. Sometimes that means the punishment that, that Todd said. But ultimately, to really, or to really see true revival, whether it's by punishment or some other punishment of evil or by some other means, uh, we have to be humbled. And I think that's what... That's what the emailer is uh, talking about. Mm -hmm. Man, there's something I have pondered that may be the reason, may be part of what, the disappointment of Amy, Amy Coney Barrett. Remember how much hope we all felt yep. in her a year ago at this time? Mm-hmm. That, that just might be another example of God just taking our idols away. Yep. That we turned her into one. Yep. Okay. And that they're, they're, that the the only way out of this is on our knees. We're not getting out of this with any election or Supreme Court justice nomination or a turn of a phrase or any book or any podcast. That that all those shibboleths just. I fear that because while the Lord chastens those whom he loves, that that could be the most difficult chastening of them all. You know what I'm saying? That that well that that could be a, a punishment that is no fun to endure for those of us on the receiving end of it. And it's utterly utterly biblical. The the notion of using uh Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar to destroy the yeah. idols, listen. Yeah. Our uh, or using Assyria our, in the Northern Kingdom. Yeah. Yes, our, our, our comfort it is an idol, and the left wants to take our comfort away. Not from themselves. Oh, trust me, they're, they're all they're gonna party constantly. They're gonna have their enclaves. But for the rest of us, they they want to wreck the economy. They they want to shut down. Uh, uh, the schools if they can't turn them into uh, flat out CRT and wh whatever centers they want to rainbow everything the, 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 so the, the, the very layout of the Old Testament is happening before our very eyes I, I think that's something we really 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 don't want to come for it, that the very thing we need right now, truly, to come back to faith, if we really think we need revival, is actually being done 
effectively by the enemy. That just goes to show the cosmic play that we are in the middle of. Because we've been warned many, many times. So it's all going to be all of our, all the things we love, the movies, the football games, all of you think all of that. You, we're going to be able to go to watch movies about Captain America and go to football games where mer masculine meritocracy. No, it's all going to be taken away in the name of global warming seminars. It, it's just so obvious right now that the greatest story ever told is playing out here right in our own backyard and we deserve it because the enemy is actually in many ways giving us what we need god removing his hand because we want to do it ourselves in faith shame on us hmm. yeah i'm just contemplating that that option is what's playing out on the table and i'm yeah. just gonna tell you man that doesn't give me a warm fuzzy no, sure it doesn't We'll come back with more of your feedback here in a moment. You know, you hear a lot of talk these days about variants, masks, vaccines. Not a whole heck of a lot, though, about, you know, preventative health. Because we don't have a health care system. We have a sick care system. And if you're healthy, then you don't need to access it as much. And then they don't get as much money. Uh, but changing your lifestyle, eating habits, uh, those are things, particularly now with winter here, or just about here, uh, that make you uh, a little less prone uh, to getting sick or worse. Uh, even though the fact checkers go nuts when you point out things like vitamin D actually works and things of that nature. Uh, and that's why you want to look at superfoods like Field of Greens. It uses real USDA organic fruits and vegetables. They are loaded with antioxidants that support heart health, metabolism, blood pressure, pre-probiotics, so they support good digestion as well. 18 clinically researched fruits and vegetables in every serving. So it just you take one scoop and you mix it in with any water-based drink, stir it up, and in that one drink, you're getting a full you're getting a full serving of fruits and vegetables right there. That's more than most Americans get in a day, if sadly not longer. If you want to try it today, it's part of my wake up in the morning first thing regimen every single day. Go to BrickHouseSteve.com and get 15% off your first order now with the promo code Steve at checkout. Use the promo code Steve at checkout. Get 15% off when you go to BrickHouseSteve.com. Promo code Steve, BrickHouseSteve.com. Let's get back to some feedback Friday. Uh, this is from Tammy Bear, who says, you were talking about the uh, the law and the pro-life law in, your text, in, in Texas and your mom, and I wanted to tell you that there are many ways to look at getting pregnant. For me, though, it saved my life. I was on the wrong path with drugs and homelessness. I was looking for someone to save me as a teenager. I was looking for that in the things I was doing. We all know that won't save you, but I was ignorant and young. The father of my son and I were dealing and using drugs and manufacturing drugs after we split. He ended up in prison most of his life. He has been in and out since his teen years. We were committing petty crimes, sleeping wherever we found ourselves at the end of the day. I did work till I was put on bed rest, then kicked out from my own apartment by my aunt because I had no income. <clears throat> Pardon me. If I had an abortion, I would have never changed my life. Having my son made me want to do right for him. We suffered and had many bleak holidays and moments. I made choices that people would make fun of. I went to church. I came home after work. I didn't go out to bars and parties anymore. I took him to the free community activities and any extra we had, I spent it on him. We had very little new clothing or anything really. The winters were so cold, the inside of the doorknobs and windows had frost in them and the pillows freezing to the walls where our beds were placed. It was dire and we had no family support or friends. Where I gave what I could, God filled in the rest. <coughs> Pardon me. The glory goes to God because I was not a good parent but my son still became a success. He's now a business owner. He built his business during the pandemic when no one would work. He now has about 10 employees all within the last 18 months. I thought about all my options when I was pregnant. I was a high school dropout using drugs. I had no prospects, but that one choice to keep my child broke the dysfunctional cycle. If I could say anything to a scared pregnant girl, it would be to choose to have your child and raise them in a Christ-centered life and it will be okay. Pregnancy can change your can save your life because it can change your future and your perspective if you let it. That's a very powerful testimony. I won't even attempt to add anything to it, Tammy. Thank you very much for sharing it. 
Michelle writes, I found an individual on the COVID care night, uh, COVID critical care night. Uh, uh, what's the website? FLCCC.net. There it is. Okay. Uh, willing to prescribe me ivermectin as a preventative. I paid $109 for his services. Took one day to get the prescription sent to a local pharmacy. I called Walmart. They verified the, the prescription and told me I could pick it up later in the day. Within an hour, the Walmart head pharmacist called me with drug warnings, told me the amount was too much for my safety. He then added that they did not have any in stock and suggested I transfer my prescription to another pharmacy. Fred Meyer denied me. Walgreens denied me, both with stern warnings. I found a local pharmacy that filled the prescription, $300 for 72 pills, was told that this prescription would have cost $20 a year ago. Uh, Michelle, this would have cost you $20 a few months ago. They've created a black market. They're trying to kill people. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what other conclusion to draw. Man, I can't even imagine my 2015 and 2016 self hearing me say the things that I'm saying right now, man. But I, I just, I don't even know what else to tell you. I don't know what the other explanation is. I don't know what the benign, innocent explanation is for the fact that all cause excess mortality in this country through the first 42 weeks of this year is 50% higher than it was last year. I don't know what to tell you about that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I, I, don't, I don't know what the reason for that is. Other than something sinister. I don't know what else. What, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know why an industry wants to deny effective and inexpensive early treatments from a benign and innocent perspective. I don't, I don't know what the benign or innocent answer is, and I don't believe there is one. So we're left with they're either openly trying to kill you or they're willing to. If the fact that I, I'm willing to, if, if me saying they're willing to kill you by just following orders, if that makes you feel better, I can change my language to that and I'm okay with it. But the outcome is the same. They will if you let them. Whether they want to or they're willing to, they will if you let them. You know what's a lot more expensive? Getting put on a ventilator and not getting, not walking out of an ICU. That's more expensive. Or cost you your life. I've already had COVID. I got an appointment. I've got a telehealth appointment Monday to get my ivermectin cocktail. I'm going to make sure it's in the house. Just to be on the safe side. I think everybody should at this point. Hell, half the reason I'm going to do it is just to be rebellious. I'm going to pay the money for it just because of the point of what they want to do, whether I never need it or not. There can be no control groups. I mean, we've even got the new Big Pharma early treatment prevention, whose the name I still can't pronounce. What is it, Aaron? From Pfizer? Yeah. Plovid. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not the name. Minoplavir or whatever the hell it's called. Or that's the Merck one, right? All right. Other countries are approving that. We can't get, our FDA won't even approve the ones that are Big Pharma ones. That's why they're rationing monoclonal. That's a Big Pharma product. Because they don't want any hope. Because what's playing out with COVID in this country is unique than in all the other countries of the world. That's why in the UK, they give you all kinds of breakdowns between vaccinated and unvaccinated data. There, th these other countries are just kind of having a normal, I guess we'll call it, a normal tug of war between which institutions to trust, who should have the control, who is, who's, who's effective and who is not. They're kind of having a normal political tug of war, turf war. Now, Australia and New Zealand aren't. They're in a different world all by themselves. But the UK, Israel, these other places, that's why they're more honest about their data. The Netherlands, they're more honest about their data because of that. 
What's happening here is unique. The spirit of the age sees that there is a time. This is the time here now. Like Chief Osceola at a Florida State football game to ride right out there to the 50-yard line and plunge that stake right through the logo. Okay? This is the moment. So we can't even have the big pharma early treatments that work. Nope. We're going to ration monoclonal and promote remdesivir, which doesn't work, and that's when it's not causing you kidney failure. They're not doing that in France. They're not begging people in France to take remdesivir. We're at a different, we're at the next level here because there's something, there's a spiritual cosmic battle playing out and this is the battlefield for it. And so there can be no hope. I had to laugh this morning when I saw big pharma hack Scott Gottlieb pro, uh, proclaim that the whole epi- the pandemic is going to be over in a few months. That's how good this drug is. <clears throat> Let's, let's just assume that he's just this naive of a hack. If it's that good, Scott, they're going to be rationing in that thing by Valentine's Day. Didn't we just go through this with monoclonal? Ration it. There can be no hope. There can be no solutions. There can only be control. The spirit of the age sees that there's an opportunity to get Americans to do what he is, what has been able to get the rest of Western civilizations, civil, uh, civilizations to do. Hand over their autonomy to the state. So it's a Baskin Robbins. It, it looks different in France than it looks in England and it looks in the Netherlands and it looks in Sweden, but it's still, it's still an ice cream parlor. Mm-hmm. There might be a different flavors there, right? Mm-hmm. But we're still eating ice cream. Right. Nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? We're like a Taco Bell here. They want us to be another one of those 31 flavors. There can, there can, this, the, nothing that does not provide control will be accepted. Hope opposes control. So all hope must be destroyed, even if it will actually make Merck and Pfizer money. So Regeneron, we will ration it. And if this new early drug is as good as they claim, they'll be that'll get rationed by this winter too. Mark my words. Aspirin discredited. Nobel Prize winning ivermectin deconstructed. 60-year FDA approved hydroxychloroquine dangerous. Do you see a pattern here? I have for a our, long time. Our friend Jordan Schachtel listed a, listed a bunch of this a few days ago on Twitter. And but but and it's the same it's the same as climate and everything else. The only thing the only solutions that will be that will be accepted are the ones that you that that you and I give up control of our lives and give them the control. There can be no other solutions. And it's because we are at the all-in moment for the United States of America and its future right now. We have come now to the turning of the tide. It's just a matter of which direction we're going to turn. And that's what's being determined right now. Teresa Smith writes, first of all, I want to thank you for your dedication and perseverance regarding the truth about all things related to COVID-19. I also want to pass along some information that may be of interest in regard to early home treatment of COVID. I am a registered nurse retired who last month cared for my very ill COVID-infected husband at home using a nebulized hydrogen peroxide protocol along with vitamin D3, vitamin C, quercetin, I think is how it's pronounced, and zinc. This protocol was successful and my husband did not require hospitalization. This is what Peter McCullough was talking about a couple of weeks ago here on the show. Here's the thing. There's actually all kinds of other early treatment protocols out there that aren't just hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin related. There's all kinds of them. Why? Because we know how to treat respiratory infections, guys. Otherwise, we would have buried millions more asthmatics in the last 30 years. Me among them. We know how to treat respiratory infections. We're either unwilling or we don't want to treat this one. Because it's an opportunity for them to treat us as subjects.
If that's too radical, tell me what's the alternative explanation. What's funny is I'm actually only having this argument with myself because everyone in this audience right now wants me to get more radicalized than I probably already am. So this is really an internal dialogue. I'm debating really out loud with myself. You guys are just listening in. As my as 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 myself debates me on, man, it cannot be this crazy. Then tell me what else it is. I don't know. Because I don't want it to be this crazy. Am I comfortable with crazy? Not really. No, I'm not comfortable with crazy. I'm not. Crazy's not my place of comfort. I like things defined. Not crazy. But, you know what I like even less than crazy? Being lied to. And I would be lying to myself if I did not admit crazy is now where we live. Before we get out of here, a reminder. Remember what I said earlier? You're not in a safe blue city. You're not in a sane or safe blue state. No, you're not. The knock on the doors are coming. Well, if you want to get out of those kinds of places, make sure you go in with a real estate agent that you can trust to help you do just that. We can help you with that for these unprecedented times. Bing. When you go to realestateagentsitrust.com, company started by Glenn Beck and his associates who no longer wanted to deal with real estate agents who didn't come through and they didn't want that to happen to you. So they created this entire network. It really began from our audiences here at The Blaze and then it just kind of blew up from there. All right, just about anywhere you want to move to or from, we can find you an agent who will come in, take charge of your situation while remembering that you're ultimately the one calling the shots and also comes with a fully vetted track record of success when you go to realestateagentsitrust.com. That's the website. All right, got about uh, two minutes here, guys. Final thoughts. As you spoke there, I couldn't help but wonder or that the uh, the movie Batman Begins was a documentary. The League of Shadows is real. Fauci and company are the scarecrow, and they're pumping that vaccine into the water system because they want to destroy this country through fear. And the control group that Steve is talking about is the bat signal. It's all right there. I mean, it's amazing all the movies that were given us before this thing happened. The truth will set you free, folks. Do you want to be a slave or do you want to be free? That's it. There's uh, never been a better day to say no. You know, to the Daily Wire's credit, you know, launching that lawsuit yesterday, but their branding, their branding has changed uh, to do not comply. Because at the end of the day, because of what we've discussed with Amy Coney Barrett, the disappointment she is, as well as Brett Kavanaugh, great if they rule in people like it, they, great if they rule in liberty's fa favor, if they even rule at all. But at the end of the day, um, there's only one person that can r rule in favor of your own personal liberty, and that person is you. So either you play along, you play the game, or you say, no, just no. Never been a better day to say that. And there are going to be a lot more days to say that as well. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some time away because the war will be here when we get back on Monday. Until then, John 317.